morning all in this lecture i will explain the system of ideal gas in quantum mechanical ensembles so far in this lecture series we discussed about the statistics of classical systems where the system is composed of distinguishable particles and the statistics obeyed by such systems is known as maxwell boltzmann statistics in the last three lectures we discussed the statistics of quantum mechanical systems that is systems composed of indistinguishable particles and we showed that there are only two kind of possibility one is the particle having symmetric wave function the other is the particle with anti symmetric wave functions and the statistics obeyed by systems composed of particles with symmetric wave functions is known as bose einstein statistics and the statistics obeyed by systems composed of particles with anti symmetric wave functions is known as fermi dirac statistics okay. now we will consider the case of quantum mechanical micro canonical ensemble first then we will consider the quantum mechanical canonical ensemble as well as quantum mechanical grand canonical ensemble and we will consider the simplest of the system that is a system of ideal gas okay so consider a system of n non interacting indistinguishable particles confined to a volume v and sharing an energy e so the macro state of the system is defined by the parameters n v and e our aim is to find the number of distinct accessible micro states and that will denote as omega of n v e that is the number of micro states accessible with the particular macro state n v e, and e here we are considering the micro canonical ensemble that is it is an isolated system so energy is fixed now for very large volume v the single particle energy levels will be very close to each other because the spacing is inversely proportional to volume so for very large volume the energy levels will be very close to each other and our idea is to divide the energy levels into group of levels okay with the ith group having gi number of levels i will explain consider a set of energy levels the spacing decreases as we go up now since these energy levels are very close to each other you can divide them into different cells you consider first cell with an average energy e1 okay e1 is the average energy of this set of levels in the first cell these cells are separated by these red lines okay so this is the first cell there are a lot of energy levels average energy of this is given by e1 this is second cell there is also a lot large number of energy levels the average energy is e2 and for this cell the average energy is e3 and so on now the number of uh, levels energy levels in this particular cell is g1 number of energy levels in this particular cell is g2 and so on again this g1 levels may contain n1 particles this g2 levels may contain n2 particles g3 levels may contain n3 particles and so on okay so i hope it is clear there are a lot of energy levels the spacing is very small so we divide them into different cells and this e1 e2 e3 represents the average energy of each cell and g1 g2 g3 g4 are the number of energy levels in each cell n1 n2 n3 n4 etc are the number of particles in each cell okay now 
the total number of particles in the system is capital N. In this cell, there are N1 particles. In this cell, there are N2 particles. So, therefore, the total number of particles should be capital N. That is sigma i, N i is equal to N. This summation will run over all the cells. All the cells. Now, total energy should be E. Suppose there are N1 particles in this cell and the average energy of this cell is E1. So, this energy of this particular cell will be N1 E1. There are N2 particles in this cell and the average energy is E2. So, total energy of particles in this cell will be N2 E2. Therefore, the total energy E can be written as sigma I N I E I. Again, this summation is over all the cells, not all the energy levels, all the cells. Now, we will we have to find the number of microstates. First, we will calculate the number of these in which Ni particles can arrange in Gi levels. So, what is the number of ways in which we can arrange this N1 particles in this G1 levels. N2 particles in this G2 levels. That we will calculate first. The number of ways in which Ni particles can arrange in Gi levels. I will give you a simple example. Let there be two particles and three levels. That is, this Ni is 2, Gi is 3. Okay, two particles and three levels. And uh, we will consider three different cases, distinguishable particles, that is the classical case. For a comparison, I will uh, give you the classical case also. And the indistinguishable one, the quantum mechanical case, that consists of two uh, different systems, one with symmetric wave function, that is bosons, the other with anti-symmetric wave function, that is fermions. Okay, so from here onwards, I will consider three different cases. One is distinguishable particle that is the classical case. Second one is indistinguishable particles that is the quantum mechanical case. And again in that we have bosons as well as fermions. Bosons will obey uh, Bose-Einstein statistics and systems composed of particles with a symmetric wave function. Fermions are, will obey Fermi-Dirac statistics and the system composed of particles having anti-symmetric wave function. Okay. Now, the particles are distinguishable. So, the two particles I can denote it as A and B. We have three energy levels in that particular cell. Okay, Three levels are there. Two particles are there. So, what are the possible arrangements? One arrangement is this one, AP. Second one is this one. Okay, In the middle uh, energy level, there are two particles. And the third one is this one. Now, we have this possibility AB, then BA. Then A, B, A, B, A, A, B, B, A. So, there are total 9 possibilities. Okay, these are the total uh, 9 possibilities if we consider these particles as distinguishable. Distinguishable. Therefore, I can write omega Maxwell Boltzmann of I. Okay, Maxwell Boltzmann means the, uh, they are distinguishable particles, classical system. Then, this 9, I can write it as 3 square. Gi is 3, Ni is 2, so 3 square it is 9. If they are indistinguishable particles, I cannot write them as A and B. I will denote it as two red dots. They are indistinguishable. Okay? They are identical, indistinguishable. And if the particles are bosons, from my previous lecture, we can see that this there is no restriction for the number of particles in a particular energy level. But if you are considering fermions, there is restriction for number of particles in a particular energy level and that can be either 0 or 1. That can be either 0 or 1 in the case of fermion. But in the case of bosons, there is no such restriction. So, for indistinguishable particles bosons, we have these six possibilities. Two particles in this state, two particles in the middle state, two particles in the low state. Then one particle in the middle state and one particle in the uh, upper state. If you interchange these two, 
that will not give you a new state. But if these particles are distinguishable, if you interchange these two A and B, that will give you a new state. That is the difference between this distinguishable and indistinguishable system. So, total there are six possibilities. There are six ways in which you can arrange two particles in three levels in the case of bosons. So, how can we obtain this number six? That is nothing but 2 plus 3 minus 1 factorial divided by 2 factorial into 3 minus 1 factorial. That is the numerator you will have 4 factorial 24 divided by 2 factorial into 2 factorial. So, 24 divided by 4 you will get 6. Now, in the case of fermions, you have again 3 levels and 2 particles. So, the maximum number of particles that is an energy level can occupy is 1. So, the only three possibilities are shown here. So, I can obtain this number 3 by writing it like 3 factorial divided by 2 factorial into 3 minus 2 factorial. That is 3. Now, in general, if there are ni particles in the gi levels, in the ith cell, okay, in the ith cell, I have gi levels and the ni particles. And the number of ways in which we can visualize that uh, arrangement is given by, in the case of Maxwell Boltzmann, that is distinguishable particles, WMB of I is equal to GI raised to NI. GI raised to NI. Here you have 3 square. Okay? 3 is uh, the value of GI, 2 is the value of NI. So, in general, I can write GI raised to NI is the number of ways in which we can arrange Ni distinguishable particles among GI levels. Now, if the particles are indistinguishable and bosons or obtain Bose-Einstein statistics, then W of Be, I is equal to Ni plus GI minus 1 factorial divided by Ni factorial into GI minus 1 factorial. If you uh, want an explanation for this equation, please refer lecture number 13 where we discussed about this relation. Okay. Now, in the case of Fermi-Dirac systems, among the GI levels, you have total number of uh, levels GI and Ni particles. So, some levels may have one particle each and some levels may have zero particle each. There are only two possibilities. Some levels may have one particle, some levels may have zero particle. So, the total number of Possibility is given by the total GI factorial divided by one of the possibility is Ni levels with one particle each and the remaining GI minus Ni levels with zero particle each. So, the total number of ways is GI factorial divided by Ni factorial into GI minus Ni factorial. These are actually the number of ways in which we can arrange Ni particles in the ith cell containing GI levels. Okay, so we have uh, different cells and in which the ith cell have GI levels and Ni particles. We have these many number of ways in which the particles can be arranged in the GI levels. And that is the case with the, a particular cell. We have a lot of such cells. Therefore, the total energy E and total number of particles N can be distributed among the cells in different possibilities. And such possibilities are known as distributions. I will give you an example. Suppose there are total 4 particles and total energy of 6 epsilon. And suppose there are 4 cells, not for energy levels, there are four cells with the first cell having an average energy E1 equal to 0, second cell with an average energy E2 equal to epsilon, third cell with an average energy E3 equal to 2 epsilon, fourth cell with an average energy E4 equal to 3 epsilon. Then, these are the different distributions in which we can uh, distribute this total number of particles and total energy. Okay. The first distribution is first cell with a single particle, second cell with a single particle, third cell with a single particle and fourth cell with a single particle. So, if you calculate the total number of particles, it will be 4 and total energy will be 6 epsilon. 
okay another distribution is this one and this one this one i think uh, we can write one more uh, that is uh, uh, 0 2 2 0 then also the total number of particle will be 4 and the total energy will be 6 epsilon so these are different distributions okay so there will be different distributions uh, in which we can visualize this total number of particle n equal to 4 and the total energy e equal to 6 epsilon now if we consider any one such distribution the n i then we can calculate a number w that is the number of distinct microstates associated with the distribution set n i what is the meaning of that a particular distribution set means you have say if you consider this particular distribution set that is one particle in the first cell one particle in the second cell one particle in the third cell and one particle in the fourth cell so if you have cells like this one two three four the number of particles in each cell that is given by that particular distribution okay now suppose you have total five ways in which you can arrange the single particle in this gi levels or g1 levels and suppose there are four ways in which you can arrange the single particle in this second set of cells and so on then what is the total number of ways in which we can visualize that distribution that will definitely the product of these numbers okay that will definitely the product of these numbers and in general we already derived that this number the number of ways in which the g1 levels can be filled with n1 particles is given by g1 raised to n1 and the n2 particles filled in g2 levels can be visualized in g2 raised to n2 possibilities so the product of all those will give you pi i i runs from or runs over all the cells g i raised to n i but there is one more factor 1 by n n i factorial there is an additional factor 1 by n i factorial so what is the significance of this factor these are for the maxwell boltzmann case that is the case with the classical system okay the case with the classical particles that is distinguishable particles and in this case a particular distribution itself can be visualized in n factorial divided by n1 factorial into n2 factorial into n3 factorial into etc number of ways a particular distribution can be visualized in this many ways i will explain suppose you have four particles and total energy is 6 epsilon and you have say four energy levels e1 equal to 0 e2 equal to epsilon e3 equal to epsilon e4 equal to 3 epsilon a particular distribution is 0 3 0 1 in order to visualize this particular distribution is this one suppose the particles are distinguishable four particles are there suppose they are distinguishable a b c d then this distribution itself we can visualize in four different ways okay a b c three particles in second level that can be a b c or a d c or a b d or b c d so this particular distribution itself we can visualize in four different ways how will we obtain this four and that is given by this four factorial divided by zero factorial into three factorial into zero factorial into one factorial that is why this equation n factorial total number divided by different numbers these numbers zero three zero one okay that will give you four that will give you four now we have to incorporate the Gibbs correction factor that we discussed in lecture number 4. Then this will be modified to 1 by n1 factorial, n2 factorial, n3 factorial, etc. So this I can write it as pi i 1 by n i factorial. Pi i 1 by n i factorial. That is why this additional factor. So in the case of classical particle, the number of distinct microstates associated with a particular distribution set is given by the product of di raised to ni divided by ni factorial okay this ni factorial is uh, due to the fact that we are considering the system of distinguishable particles 
or classical particles and this gi raised to ni factor is obtained from this calculation okay now in the case of bose einstein statistics or fermi dirac statistics that is the case with the indistinguishable particles the total number of days or total number of microstates in a particular distribution ni is given by simply the product of simply the product of number of days in which ni particles can be arranged in gi energy levels that is the case with a particular cell okay and there are uh, this product runs over all the possible cells all the possible cells uh, there is no weight factor like uh, one by ni factorial and this is due to the fact that we are considering the classical system in the case of quantum mechanical system that weight factor is one okay there is only one distribution uh, there is only one possibility for a particular distribution set okay if this suppose you are considering a system with the, all the four particles are indistinguishable then this will be represented by four dots and all these four are exactly the same okay so it consists of sim simply one state for each distribution there is only one state okay that is why this factor is one now for calculating the total number of microstates we have to sum over all the possible distributions now we have to sum over all the possible distributions the prime summation means that this distribution set should satisfy the two constraints that is total number of particles equal to capital n and total energy is equal to capital e we have to run over all such distribution sets for example in this particular case we have five distributions so in order to calculate the total number of microstates we have to sum over all these five distributions for each distribution set we have these many a number of different ways these many number of different ways so you have to uh, calculate the sum over all the distribution sets and finally the entropy is given by s is equal to k log omega where omega is the total number of microstates and that is given by the sum over all the distribution sets of this quantity w of n okay so in reaching this equation our assumptions are the total number of energy levels are divided into different cells and we calculated the number of ways in which in which each cell can be arranged then we take the product of all those numbers in order to get the number of ways in which a particular distribution can be visualized and then we sum over all the possible distributions in order to get the total number of microstates okay that is the procedure we employed in reaching this expression now this logarithm of a sum of terms we can replace it with logarithm of largest term in the sum okay in our case of thermodynamic limit that is in the limit n tends to infinity for a system having very large number of particles we can replace the logarithm of a sum with logarithm of largest term in the sum i will uh, give you a proof for that statement consider this sum sigma r equal to 0 to n n c r that is n c 0 plus n c 1 plus etc up to n c n the sum of all these will give you 2 raised to n you consider n is equal to 3 then this will be 3c0 plus 3c1 plus 3c2 plus 3c3 and that is given by 3 uh, factorial divided by 0 factorial into 3 factorial this is combination okay number of combinations this is 3 factorial divided by 1 factorial into 2 factorial the general definition is ncr is equal to n factorial divided by r factorial into n minus r factorial that is the definition so you will get this as total equal to 8 that is nothing but 2 raised to 3 if n equal to 4 that will give you 4 c0 plus 4 c1 plus etc up to 4 c4 and the total sum will be 16 and it is 2 raised to 
So the general expression is the sum of all these terms equal to 2 raised to n. And what is the largest term in this sum? That will be given by n c n by 2. Okay, it is approximately the largest term in the sum is approximately n c n by 2. If n is even, as the case with the n equal to 4, the largest term is nothing but 4 c 2 and its value is 6. If n is 3, the largest value is 3 c 1 or 3 c 2, both are equal to 3. Okay, so the largest term in the sum is roughly n c n by 2. If you take the logarithm of that largest term, that will be logarithm of n factorial divided by n by 2 factorial into n by 2 factorial. Log a by b is log a minus uh, log b and there are two terms, so 2 log n by 2 factorial. Now, if n is very large, then we can use Stirling's approximation. Log n factorial is n log n minus n. So, if you apply that, you will get n log n minus n minus 2 times n by 2 log n by 2 minus n by 2. Solving this, you will get n log n minus n log n by 2. And you can write it as n log n divided by n by 2. And that is nothing but n log 2. If you take the logarithm of sum, then also you will get log 2 raised to n equal to n log 2. So, these two are the same. So, in the limit of very large n, you can use this Stirling's approximation and you can replace the logarithm of a sum with the logarithm of the largest term in the sum. Okay, largest term in the sum. So, we can write the entropy approximately equal to k log w of n i star, where w of n i star is the largest value of w of n i. Okay, if you consider this uh, sum over all the dis different distributions of this quantity, that is this logarithm of sum, you can replace it with the logarithm of largest time in the sum, that is logarithm of w of n i star, where n i star is the distribution set which maximizes this number w of n i. Now, how can we maximize a quantity? How can we maximize log w of n i? To take the change, change. But we have to be careful. Here we have two constraints or two restrictions. We have to maximize this log w in presence of two restrictions. One is sigma n i equal to capital N. Second one is sigma n i v i equal to capital N. So, in order to maximize a quantity in presence of restrictions, we have to use the method of Lagrangian multiplier that we already discussed in detail in lecture number 7. So, you can refer that. If you apply the method of Lagrangian multiplier, then you will get delta of log w minus alpha in the sigma i delta of n i minus beta in the sigma i epsilon i delta n i equal to 0. Alpha and beta are known as... Uh, the Lagrange multipliers. Lagrange multipliers. Now we will discuss the three different cases. First one is classical system, that is Maxwell Boltzmann statistics. Then second one is quantum mechanical system that obeys Bose Einstein statistics. Third one is quantum mechanical systems that obeys Fermi derived statistics. In the case of Maxwell Boltzmann, log W of n i, we already calculated it as log W of n i is nothing but i i g i raised to n i divided by n i factorial. We know that a logarithm of a product log a b c is log a plus log b plus log c. So, logarithm of this product will be sum of this logarithm of this term that is n i log g i minus log n i factorial. Okay, log a raised to b is b log a, uh, log a by b is log a minus log b. So, using that expressions, this pi, the product uh, changed to the sum sigma n i log g i minus log n i factorial. Now, sigma n i log g i minus this you can apply Stirling's approximation. So, n i log n i minus n i, there is a negative sign, so that becomes plus. So, combined together, this you can write it as sigma n i log g i by n i. Take n i common, then log g i minus log n i becomes log g i by n i plus n i. This is the case with the Maxwell Boltzmann. 
if we consider the bose einstein statistics then log w of ni equal to log pi ni plus gi minus 1 factorial divided by ni factorial into gi minus 1 factorial so again the product will be converted as sum sigma i log ni plus gi minus 1 factorial minus log ni factorial minus log gi minus 1 factorial use stirling's approximation in all the three terms you will get ni plus gi minus 1 log ni plus gi minus 1 minus log n ni log ni minus gi minus 1 log gi minus 1 there is one more term that will cancel from all the three okay here you will have minus ni plus gi minus 1 and here we will have a plus ni here you will have a plus gi minus 1 so all those terms will cancel now if ni is very much greater than 1 and gi is very much greater than 1 you can neglect this minus 1 so you can write the first time as ni plus gi log ni plus gi the last time you can write gi log gi now ni log ni plus gi minus ni log ni that you can write as ni log 1 plus gi by ni the second time gi log ni plus gi minus gi log ni you can write it as gi log 1 plus ni by gi this is the case with boss einstein statistics the fermi dirac case the log w of ni is log pi i gi factorial ni fa divided by ni factorial into gi minus ni factorial again this pi will change to sigma log gi factorial minus log ni factorial minus log gi minus ni factorial stirling's approximation then finally arranging this you will get sigma i ni log gi by ni minus 1 minus gi log 1 minus ni by gi these terms uh, will cancel okay this uh, minus gi plus ni gi minus n. these terms will cancel rearranging of the other terms you will get this term okay now we can write all the three different cases using a single expression so the single expression is given by log w of ni equal to sigma i ni log gi by ni minus a minus gi by a log 1 minus a ni by gi if you take the limit a tends to 0 you will get maxwell boltzmann case if you take a is equal to minus 1 you will get bos einstein case if you take a equal to plus 1 you will get fermi dirac case for example if you put a equal to 1 you will get this case okay if you put a equal to 1 okay then you will get the fermi dirac case if you put a equal to minus 1 you will get the bose einstein case okay, a equal to minus 1 you will get the bose einstein case and in the limit a tends to 0 don't put simply a equal to 0 in the limit a tends to 0 the second quantity what happens to a second quantity minus gi by a log 1 minus a ni by g that becomes minus gi by a into log 1 minus x what is the expansion of log 1 minus x it is minus x minus x square by 2 minus x cube by 3 and so on and if x is very small, you can neglect the higher order times. You can retain only this minus x. So, if you retain only the first term and neglecting all other, because a is very small, a tends to 0. So, the, you can neglect the second order times. The first two times, if you multiply this one, okay, if you multiply these two, gi will cancel, a will cancel, minus and minus becomes plus ni. So, this last term becomes plus ni. And you can look at the expression of Maxwell Boltzmann case ni log gi by ni plus ni plus ni. Okay, the second term will contribute a plus ni, and this a is zero, so you can write as ni log gi by ni plus ni. So by inserting a parameter a and writing a common expression like this, you can treat all the three cases. Okay, simultaneously. Okay, you can write simply write this expression. If a tends to 0, you will get Maxwell Boltzmann. If a equal to minus 1, you will get Bose Einstein. If a equal to plus 1, you will get Fermi Dirac. Okay. Now, the maximization condition becomes delta of log w of ni minus alpha into sigma i delta ni minus beta into sigma i e i delta ni equal to 0. That becomes log w of ni. Substitute the value from here. Okay. From here. And uh, taking the delta variation you can see that this ni is the variable ni is the variable this gi the number of levels 
is fixed in a particular cell. So the first time will contribute log g i by n i minus a into delta n i minus these terms alpha into delta n i summation i take it outside then minus beta into e i delta n i. This for the distribution set which maximizes the number that is n i is equal to n i star okay that's the most probable value n i equal to n i star if you calculated this quantity at n i equal to n i star you will get zero. Now you can take a delta n i outside so log g i by n i minus a minus alpha minus beta e i evaluated at n i equal to n i star into delta n i equal to zero. Since delta n i is are arbitrary we must have the term inside this square bracket should vanish for each value of i that is log g i by n i minus a minus alpha minus beta e i should be equal to zero okay that is i can write this should be zero for n i equal to n i star the most probable value okay then i can write it as g i by n i star minus a equal to e raised to alpha plus beta e i e raised to alpha plus beta e i or g i by n i star is equal to a plus e raised to alpha plus beta e i or n i star by g i is equal to 1 divided by a plus e raised to alpha plus beta e i. If you put a equal to 0, you will get the Maxwell-Boltzmann case. If you put a equal to minus 1, you will get the Bose-Einstein case. If you put a equal to plus 1, you will get the Fermi-Dirac case. So, this equation gives the most probable number of particles n i star per energy level because each cell consists of g i energy levels. So, n i star by g i will give you the most probable number of particles per energy level in the ith cell. In the ith cell. This is the expression. Now, entropy is given by s equal to k log w of n i star w of n i star w log w of n i we already know the value substitute n i as n i star. So, s by k is equal to sigma i n i star log g i by n i star minus a minus g i by a log 1 minus a n i star by g i. Okay. So, this is nothing but n i star into alpha plus beta e i alpha plus beta e i minus g i by a log 1 minus a divided by a plus e raised to alpha plus beta e i. What is the uh, from where we obtain all this, you have here log g i by n i star minus a is equal to alpha plus beta e i. That is why here I put alpha plus beta e i instead of log g i by n i star minus a. And n i star by g i, we already have this value. n i star by g i as 1 by a plus e raised to alpha plus beta e i. Okay, that we substituted here. Now, this is n i star into alpha plus beta e i minus g i by a log to take LCM, a will cancel. So, e raised to alpha plus beta e i divided by a plus e raised to alpha plus beta e i. This is sigma i n i star alpha plus beta e i plus g i by a. How this becomes plus? You take uh, invert this uh, logarithm type. Okay, log a by b, you take it as minus log b by a. Okay, so uh, invert take the inverse of this. So, that becomes logarithm of e raised to alpha plus beta e i plus a divided by e raised to alpha plus beta e i. So, s is equal to sigma i n i star alpha plus beta e i plus g i by a log this term becomes 1 plus a into e raised to minus alpha minus beta e i. This is the equation for entropy. But sigma i alpha n i star is nothing but alpha into n the total number of particles because if you sum over all the cells n i star you will get the total number of particles similarly sigma i beta e i n i star that will be simply beta e so you can substitute for the first two terms then take those two terms into the left hand side then you will get s by k minus alpha n minus beta e is equal to sigma i g i by a this term sigma i g i by a 
log 1 plus a e raised to minus alpha minus beta e by k. But alpha is equal to minus mu by kt. Okay, alpha minus mu by kt and beta is 1 by kt. So, substituting that value, s by k plus mu and k kt minus e by kt equal to this take LCM. Uh, then this becomes Ts plus mu n minus e by kt. But this mu n is nothing but gives free energy g. So, this becomes g minus e minus Ts divided by kt. And this g minus e minus Ts is g minus e minus Ts is nothing but Pv. So, that becomes Pv by kt. All these are results from thermodynamics that we already discussed in many of the lectures, okay, previous lectures. So, this is Pv by kt. So, I obtained the final expression PV by KT is equal to 1 by A sigma GI log 1 plus A e raised to minus alpha minus beta E. Okay. Now, we will consider the case of Maxwell Boltzmann statistics that is you put A equal to 0 or A tends to 0. If you put A tends to 0 here log 1 plus X this term log 1 plus x will be approximately x because log 1 plus x is x minus x square by 2 plus x cube by 3 minus etc. For very small n you can neglect this higher order terms. You just write log 1 plus x approximately x. Therefore log 1 plus a e raised to minus alpha minus beta e i is approximately a e raised to minus alpha minus beta e i. Substitute this value here. This A in the denominator will cancel with this A. So, you will get PV equal to KT into sigma I, GI e raised to minus alpha minus beta E. But we already have this expression GI by NI star equal to e raised to alpha plus beta EI plus A from this expression. Okay, from this expression you have this value. And uh, for Maxwell Boltzmann statistics, A tends to 0. Therefore, GI e raised to minus alpha minus beta e i. I can write it as n i star. So, this will be sigma i n i star. But again, what is sigma i n i star? It is total number of particles n. So, once again, I obtained the ideal gas equation PV by n k t from an entirely different formulation. Now, why this sigma i n i star is equal to total n? This n i star is the numbers in the distribution which maximizes W. I will give you an uh, example. We already discussed. If you consider these five distributions, which one will maximize W? How can we calculate W? W is given by N factorial divided by N1 factorial into N2 factorial into N3 factorial into N4 factorial. So, for this particular distribution set, this W is 4. If you calculate that uh, for this particular distribution set 1, 1, 1, 1, then that W will be 4 factorial by 1 factorial, 1 factorial, 1 factorial, 1 factorial, which is 24. So, depending on the distribution, that W number will vary. And we are searching for the distribution for which that W is maximum. And for that distribution set, these numbers are known as different Ni stars. Ni stars. This is N1 star, N2 star, N3 star, N4 star. And the sum of all those will give you the total number. The sum of all those will give you the total number. So, that is the idea. Sigma i n i star is equal to uh, capital N, total number of particles. Okay. So, this is the derivation of ideal gas equation from a different perspective. So, now we have to discuss the other two cases, the Bose-Einstein statistics and uh, Fermi-Dirac statistics. But before that, uh, we will develop the formal theory of an ideal gas in the canonical and grand canonical ensembles. And then later we will discuss all these things. Okay. So, in the next lecture, we will discuss the theory of ideal gas in canonical and grand canonical ensemble. Thank you.